All right. Okay. Um, so uh, the last talk before lunch break, um, we've got Domen, um, and Domen has been uh, busy bee working uh, on things that are going to make your life uh, your life easier, um, tooling and infrastructure things, um, especially um, Cashix. And he's here to talk to us about that uh, today. So give him a warm uh, round of applause. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me well? Yeah. All right. So um, yeah, it's great to see such a big conference uh, at NixConf. Um, so I'm going to start with a cheesy picture and a cheesy statement. Um, yeah, this has been my passion um, to, to think about this question over and over again. Um, those that were here last year, I had a talk how to um, running, running Nick successfully for two years in production. Um, and during uh, that time, um, I've learned a lot. And um, I think this is kind of the next step. How do we make it scale in a way that you know, multiple organizations um, can use that easily? without uh, hiring someone that, that is you know, in the core team of Nix to be able to, to start using Nix. Um, and, and what are the gaps to get there? Um, and yeah, I, I think I can personally break it out into two fields. Um, one is documentation. Um, there, is, there is a lot to be said on this topic. This, this talk is not going to be about that. I will say that um, yeah, everybody tries to do their best. I also contributed uh, a couple of, of I did a few experiments on the documentation topic, um, but um, I think there is a, a second point, and I, I started thinking about which one should come first, and once we have the infrastructure, I think the incentive to write documentation is going to come by itself, more on that a bit later. So I've decided to, to spend more time on the second point and get back to the first one once that's uh, in a good state. Um, so. A brief history, what got me to this thinking and, and what got us to, to Cashix and Hercules, as uh, Robert will present later. Um, I think uh, that it's important to, to capture that. Um, so it starts in 2016 with uh, Peter Simons, the first person that kind of like put a documentation how to run your Hydra or a CI for Nix. Um, and yeah, it's it's still there. It's still valid. It's uh, there's a few things that change, but if you go there, you can set up your own Hydra. Um, and that was um, half a year later. I added this to to Nix OS uh, to Nix packages. Um, Elko um, wasn't that happy about that because um, for a very valid reason, Hydra was meant to be used for Nix packages, and it's very well crafted as this big build farm, but it's not that well designed uh, to be used in, in an organizational uh, setting. Um, and uh, those that might run one know, know the problems. Um, but I've said, OK, I'll, I'll help maintain. This is the best we have, so let's go with that. right? Um, so it's there. Uh, how many people use Hydra? All right. So about 20 hands, 30 maybe. Um, so yeah, the first comment was, uh, now I might finally have my own Hydra. Tried once, had trouble, didn't try again, right? So <laughs> progress. Um, so um, in, in about um, yeah, a few months later, uh, we figured out that Elko was right. Um, we need to, as always, right? <laughs> uh, we, need to, we need to rethink this. Uh, how, do we, how do we go forward? So with Joe Fish, uh, um, that's his nickname. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to pronounce his surname. I'm sorry. Uh, with Joe, uh, we started this project uh, called Her Hercules CI back then. Um, the idea was to rewrite basically to to keep the SQL schema to keep um, everything except rewriting all the Perl um, and the front end with a proper HTTP API. Um, and and I created uh, uh, back then an Elm uh, application with a new front end. Um, and um, we did this in, in free time, um, and every time we had some, you know, free time after work or whatever, we came back and we did some work. Um, after fixing Hydra, we, we, we went back to re-implementing Hydra, and um, and then it kind of died off um, for multiple reasons. Um, 
One is that it was a big uh, project to, to do. Um, and um, second one, uh, we kind of needed to reverse engineer Hydra and, and we didn't really anticipate um, that uh, that's, that's not non-trivial. So we tried to save time on, on re-implementing the goal schema and, and asking some hard questions, but we've wasted time uh, reverse engineering. Um, and also it was done in free time again. So I started to ask myself, okay, how do we build something sustainable? How do we build something that will you know, d not die again? Um, and what have we failed at this time? Um, and um, so yeah, this is, yeah, t this, this took about uh, a year or maybe less than a year to come to, to a state that, that it, to a state where it still wasn't working. Um, back then I was um, ha uh, employed at, at IOHK and I didn't have any time. Um, and then in uh, April 2018, this year, um, I left IHK and I said, okay, how do we fix this? And uh, looking around at different communities, I found that um, the only way to do it is, is to make it um, a product um, so that um, development can be sustained and that people can be assured that after some time it's still going to be there and they can use it and it gets better and better. Um, and um, I thought, okay, it's just me, right? So what can I do? Um, I know that building a CI at this point is hard and it's a lot of work, even though um, it's like packaging, right? How, how hard can it be? Um, so this is just on a different level. Um, so I said, okay, I drew uh, the whole CI design and I said, okay, what's the most minimal thing we can do here? And I said, okay, we can, we can already have uh, a binary cache as a service where you can register, you get a binary cache and you use it with your own CI, your own development, whatever you want, right? That's the idea. Um, so my first goal was, to, um, yeah, that setting up a binary cache shouldn't take more than a minute and you're, you're good to go, right? Uh, whatever CI you use, um, you, you plug it in. And, and, and you start uh, pushing binaries. And uh, you know, your developers, whoever, can, can go from there um, and use those binaries. Uh, now step two is what's happening right now. Um, implementing uh, garbage collection, implementing different permissions, multiple read keys, multiple write keys, and so on. Um, and that should be all easy, right? Um, and then step three is, is finally document how to use CacheX, what are the, you know, what are the common things that people um, get into trouble when, when starting to, to use Nix and so on? So we come back to, to, my, um, to solving the first of, of the two points that I think are important. Um, so a bit of numbers. It's running for almost 150 days. It has uh, more than 500 users uh, registered. Uh, it's using uh, 1.3 terabytes of storage. Um, about half of users create the binary cache. Um, and so far we had um, two hours of downtime, um, which turned out to be that um, some Haskell optimization actually um, in the compiler um, got uh, yeah, the machine down. It used all the memory. So this is still something I, I, we want to pursue and fix. Um, but now at least if, if that happens again, it should uh, recover itself. So. Hopefully that's that's fixed. Um, so yeah, what I've I've been working in the last couple of months is is um, a private binary cache. So uh, for for people who don't want to publish their packages publicly, um, and this is going to be uh, a paid feature. And um, I'm going to try to show that. Um, I have a, a live demo and and a slide demo. So let's see which one works better. Um, how am I doing on time? A ah, few more minutes and then. All right, so so now you'll, you'll be able to pick uh, if you want your binary cache to be public or private. Um, the UI is, is not great. This is just you know a way to show that it works for now. Um, so you'll, you pick your, your cache X uh, subdomain, and then you pick uh, what is the team in your organization that will have access, read access to, to, to the binary cache, right? The write access is the signing key, and I will also add support for multiple signing keys. So if you want to have uh, one for the CI and one for developers or whatever, um, that will be there. So let's create NixCon 2018. Um, and then, yeah, let's say you want to 
let's say that uh, we want to give you know one team on GitHub access, whatever is in there. Well, I'll probably show something like members or something that it's more clear. What, what, who are you giving access to? And then you create the binary cache. You get instructions how to install Nix, how to install Cachex. You get uh, instructions how to authenticate from your machine to, to the Cachex. And uh, then you push the store paths. One thing I want to make sure here, the signing key is actually the secret key that you only get that is generated in the browser, it's never sent to Cachex, and if you don't make a backup, I don't have a backup for you, so you'll have to create a new cache. Um, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure this is, this is more clear in the documentation. Um, and yeah, that's basically how you push things with a signing key. Um, and then if you go to, to the link, this is nixcon2018.cachex.org. Well, this is a development server, so it's not actually there. I, you'll see that it's trusted uh, by this GitHub uh, user. Um, that, that's the public key, and then instructions how to use it. So you can put, you know, inside your organization, you can give link, and again, you install Nix, Cachex, uh, you authenticate because you need to, it's a private binary cache. Um, then you say Cachex use, and that configures uh, your Nix conf and your netrc configuration, and you can use the binary cache basically. Um, so, the demo went well. <laughs> um, yeah, if you go to cashtix.org, there is a forum where you can sign up. Um, probably this weekend, we'll, we'll send out a, a private beta access for people to play with if you think this is cool. Um, and now, Robert will talk about uh, the second part of what we're working together, uh, the Hercules CI. So, yeah. Meanwhile, sorry, before, bef meanwhile he sets up, you can probably ask me a question or two. <laughs> Questions? Oh, yeah, over here. So uh, it's actually already relatively easy to set up um, uh, private binary cache with S3 or so. Um, so what's the main value add of CacheX? So, so the main value is that, yes, you can do that. Um, there are, there's going to be features that are going to be on top of that uh, that will make your life easier. So like garbage collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, can, you will be able to set up with different single sign-ons who has access to that. Um, and yeah, you can use S3 for that, but it has uh, it's very limited. Um, on the other hand, uh, behind Cachex there is an application server that which gives you which gives me possibility to do a lot of things like searching through through that uh, through the binary cache, um, and it's going to be connected to to Hercules, so it, um, the bootstrap of of using Cachex is going to be faster, right? So um, it's um, yeah, those are the 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 benefits in okay. for now. Cool, thanks. What's the cost model for Cachex? Um, I don't. I didn't publish it yet, and I, I don't want to say what it's going to be. I'm still um, thinking about it. Uh, most probably is going to be uh, storage oriented. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to, to, to come up with a way that it's, it's feasible for people, that it's not too limiting. I always uh, don't enjoy when, when there is like a, an arbitrary limit and you just you know, can't use the service. Um, yeah, still deciding on this, um, but most probably everything looks like it's gonna be storage, uh, storage size oriented. Um, but if you have some feedback about this, um, I'm interested to hear, um, it's, it's not a, no solution is ideal, <laughs> unfortunately. Or at least I couldn't come up with one. Maybe a last question? My Apple Watch is today going to tell me that I moved, uh, moved enough. Hey, thanks. Uh, when I tried CacheX for the auto updates, to just to, to review them, uh, I found out that I need to add my own user uh, into trusted users to use it, although I'm only reading from the cache. Why is that? Yeah, so um, um, in Nix, the binary cache can, can serve you um, basically, as, as Ilko said in his talk, right? When you build a package, 
the, the actual result of the package can be arbitrary, right? The, 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 the signing doesn't assure you that it doesn't sign the actual contents of a package, right? So if you are, if, if people would be able to just download things in your, your Nick store from any user, that's basically they could vi give you, uh, uh, you know, um, non-secure binary, I mean, uh, adversary binary, right? For if, if user guest one downloads, uh, can download from any binary um, cache, then they can just uh, put something in and then user, you know, guest two uses that uh, package and it could be something uh, not expected, right? So that's the, the trust model in X uh, wants to make sure that users on one machine uh, cannot affect each other and that's why it's done this way. Uh, you probably might want to ha have it in your hand. It's probably going to be too yeah. far away. All right. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll put it there for the demo. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, this is me. This is what I look like. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of somewhat kind of new to the next community still. Um, I, um, I'm also on a bit active on Stack Overflow, by the way. So if you've asked a question there, Maybe you've, uh, you've received an answer from me. I hope it was a good answer. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell a bit about myself. Um, some history. Um, yeah, my, my story started in 2016 when I was, uh, I had, uh, had NixOS on, uh, on my desktop. And um, yeah, I, this was me deploying um, an enterprise Scala application on, on JBoss. Um, that didn't work very well. But also in 2016, this was me deploying the Enterprise Scala application with Nix on CentOS, actually. And yeah, so since then, I've uh, I started freelancing and doing some 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 research uh, into like, well, how how am I going to prevent these kind of situations, um, improve things. And obviously, Nix was going to be part of that. Um, yeah, so I I did some uh, side projects basically, and um, yeah, I I started experimenting with a Nix CI, and I figured out quite soon that uh, building a, a CI is not just a side project. It's it's really uh, takes a lot of effort to build a good one. So uh, last summer, I, uh, I talked to uh, Domen, and uh, we decided to work together. And we, uh, we redesigned um, our CI design. And this is what we came up with. Um, so we have Hercules CI. Um, and it will read, of course, it will fetch sources from GitHub. Um, but they won't actually go to our service. Um, instead, we'll, have, uh, we'll provide you with an open source agent um, that will fetch the sources, uh, build it, use CacheX to fetch the dependencies, uh, use CacheX to push them back um, when, it, uh, when it's done, and report back to the Hercules CI service um, for notifications and uh, a dashboard and so on. So yeah, th these are like the distinguishing features um, for Hercules. Um, you will be able to control your own build farm. So if you have some exotic things you need, um, it should be easy um, to do so. Um, you can have as many machines as you want. And yeah, we strive to be the, the best and easiest uh, CI for uh, open source, Nix users, and uh, and for companies. All right. So here we go. This is. Uh, Uh, 
this is our MVP. And um, yeah, so when you go to the, uh, to the application, uh, you just have to sign in with GitHub. Um, we'll be using our GitHub integration uh, to configure um, stuff like permissions automatically. So now Hercules knows that I'm there and we can start configuring. So I'll uh, install Hercules now on Hercules CI itself. We have a monorepo that has the actual code. And now it'll be set up so that uh, Hercules CI can uh, can actually only access um, that single repository. All right. So now we can switch to the Hercules CI account and start configuring the agent. And that's just a little snippet of. Uh, in this case, uh, Nix Ops configuration. Um, we have a Nix Ops module that helps to uh, to set this up. So all we have to do now is uh, write that to agent.nix file. Like this. And uh, deploy the agent. All right. Rosary showing up, it's good. So now all we have to do is uh, is make a, a change to trigger a build. And um, I guess what I'll do instead is just push head to uh, da -da -da, feature uh, whatever. And you'll see it starts evaluating. And now it's, it should be building. Um, it's not finished yet. Um, the actual building is something uh, that's almost done. Um, I mean, as a feature. Um, so it'll, it'll be stuck in this state for a while. <laughs> but yeah. We do have evaluation working. And so these are the attributes that are in, uh, in our project. And you can see there's actually, um, we found a problem um, by using Hercules. It's, it's, it's adding value. Um, yeah, so, so we have uh, uh, NixUp as a, as a development tool. We, we're, we're building it in our, uh, in our uh, Nix file. And um, yeah, we, we, we linked it in the way that was suggested um, in the NixOps documentation, but um, we're not using NixPath to find Nix packages. Um, that's actually a good measure to, to make sure that you're, you're building the right thing, um, to make sure that uh, some, some developer's uh, environment doesn't affect um, your project. So, yeah, that, uh, that broke here. Um, turns out that looks like for documentation, it depends on a path that's discovered through NixPath, and it shouldn't. So that's something we'll have to fix. Um, yeah, so that concludes the demo. Um, yeah. 
So, oh, you've seen this. Right, so um, obviously we're not done yet. Um, and we have some, some further plans um, to make this a, a really great CI. Um, we want to pro provide some kind of Nix shell functionality. Um, uh, with Hydra, for example, you, you cannot do side affecting stuff, at least not in a proper way. And we want to, uh, to integrate this into uh, Hercules CI so we have a, like a principled way to, uh, uh, to perform side affecting stuff as part of your uh, deployment pipeline. Um, yeah, and, and we, we're still looking into ways um, to integrate with uh, container infrastructure like Docker or Kubernetes. Um, There's a huge design space. Um, we, we haven't really decided how, um, how we want to do this, and we would love to talk to you about, uh, about this and um, other ways you you are using Nix, so we can uh, provide the best experience. Um, yeah, uh, there's a private beta. You can sign up for it. Um, we'll be sending out um, emails very soon uh, to gather some more information. And um, yeah, if you if you sign up now, you'll you'll be included and. Um, uh, we love to hear it from you. Um, so, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Roman and Robert. And uh, do we have questions from the audience? Yes, we do. And I will do my running thing again. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Uh, so, what's your technological stack? Uh, which, which language this is written in, and can we deploy it as well? And the sub-question: uh, Did you manage to reverse engineer the Hydra Cube runner so others can reuse it for their own CI attempts, for example, like micro CI? And go. <laughs> right. Yeah. So our, our stack is basically um, Haskell for the backend services. Um, we're using Elm for the front end. Obviously, we're using Nix for packaging and deployment. Um, for now, we're using Nix ops on AWS, but we probably want to change that into something uh, a bit more flexible. Um, yeah, and so uh, our agent software is open source. At least it will be when we uh, start the private beta. We will release the, the agent software and yeah, it's open source, so definitely have a look at it, how we uh, invoke, um, how we invoke Nix. Next question. Oh. Uh, so it wasn't entirely clear to me what the agent is for. Uh, can you say that again? All right, so, so the, the agent, that's the, the part that you're running on your own infrastructure, and it's responsible for uh, invoking Nix for evaluation um, for invoking, well, basically Nix build, and yeah, it, it'll fetch dependencies, obviously, and it'll upload those depend uh, those build uh, packages uh, to a binary cache. Oh, okay, so the evaluation and building is not done by the Hercules CI service. Uh, yeah, yeah. So at, at least at least for now, um, the like the hard work, so to speak. Is uh, is all done on customer infrastructure. Um, we may implement uh, a, a more hosted version of the service uh, in the future. But right, because that would be a very compelling feature. Uh, yes, to yes, just of provide that whole. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, our first approach is is to make it really easy um, to do it on your own infrastructure, and yeah, probably in the future we will uh, uh, look into. <laughs> hosting the entire infrastructure. Because for most people, it's not required to, uh, uh, to to host their own infrastructure, right? Because 
many applications are running on like commodity uh, hardware. So yeah, for, for those people we want, if, if we can make it even easier by, by hosting um, their agents, um, we will do so, probably, yeah. More questions? Nope, doesn't seem so. Um, so yeah, thank you very much again, Dome and Robert, for your talk. And so uh, next up, we've got uh, one hour break uh, for lunch, lunchtime. Enjoy.